Hi, welcome to SEW Your Drive, Driving the World. Today we have Jared Scott with us, and he's going to be talking about mounting positions. Jared, how are you doing today? Doing good, Cully. How are you doing? Absolutely wonderful. It's great having you. And real quick, what is a mounting position with SEW Your Drive? All right. Well, let's go ahead and get the basics out of the way. This gearbox that I have here is laying flat on the table. That is a mounting position. It's how it's oriented. Usually they're going to be attached to equipment, maybe a conveyor or something else but it could be mounted a variety of ways. It just depends on what you need. Makes enough sense to me. So with the mounting positions, what, what does it affect and uh, why are they important? Why can't we just, you know, treat every gearbox exactly the same? It seems like a simple solution, but the big issue with mounting positions and why they're important is because you've got something inside of every gearbox, and that's lubrication. Usually it's oil. So if you imagine this was a bottle of water, you ever watched a, where the air bubble moves, depending yeah. on how you rotate the bottle. Definitely did that as a kid. Yeah. So gearboxes are going to have some air in them. You want the air to be away from the parts that need lubrication. So you want the oil to be on the parts that need lubrication. So mounting positions are important because if this gearbox out of the factory was designed for that mounting position that you see there, and the oil was designed for that, and then you took it off the shelf and you said, but I need it for this position here. Well, now your oil level is going to be at a different area. And you're not going to have lubrication in some of the bearings inside of there. So it's very important that when we design gearboxes for a mounting position, that that mounting position be honored in the installation process. Okay, so we're talking about lubrication and oils. Uh, if there's oil in the box, I mean, I guess we could just fill everyone all the way full, but... What's the benefit of the oil? And I mean, if there's oil in there, why do you need a certain amount? That's another great question. So I've often wondered that too. And then uh, I learned about churning losses. So um, oil has a benefit, but there's also a negative side effect. The benefit of oil is that it's going to keep the components cool. The more cool that a gearbox runs, the more efficient it is. So you say, well, let's just fill it all the way up with oil. I want you to imagine um, when you were uh, at the pool the last time. And if you're like in the shallow end and you're walking out towards the deep end to start to swim, there's some resistance. So that's a, that's a lot of resistance. It takes more effort on your part to get to the end versus say you were just walking down the street and you walked through a water puddle. There's not much resistance there. Well, oil is going to offer resistance even though it is lubricating the components. So the more full this box is, the harder that the the gears and the bearings and everything in the motor has to work in order to produce the end result, the torque you need. So that creates heat. So the gearbox gets hot, even though it has a lot of lubrication in it. And then you have inefficiencies. So you could actually fail a gearbox if it's completely full of oil and it's in the wrong mounting position. Yeah, that was a great comparison. And that actually makes a lot of sense. So we have turning losses, but are there also like maybe wear parts or certain things that could fail or go wrong if you don't have the proper amount of lubrication for your mounting position? Oh, absolutely. Um, a couple of things that could happen there is uh, bearings for one. Um, bearings need to have lubrication. So some bearings that we have, they're located in a spot where oil isn't even going to get to them. So we use what we call a shield ring. The shield ring coupled with some grease, keeps that bearing lubricated. But if you were to take that gearbox that was designed for that particular orientation, and then you moved it, now you've got a problem because that bearing could fail, or vice versa. It was designed in a mountain position to have a shield ring. You moved it into that position from a position where it wasn't designed. You have a failure on that bearing. Or you could have a, a failure on an oil seal. You could actually blow an oil seal out because it has too much oil in it. So it's very important to only use the operating manual recommended specifications and amounts for oils and types. Okay, so we are having customers out there and let's say they use a lot of the similar box but different mounting positions. So they're aware of all of this and they have a box and they know it's in the wrong mounting position. Is there anything they can do in the field to correct it or do they have to send it back to SCW for a simple oil change? Well, it depends. But for the majority of the gearboxes that Eurodrive produces, you could take the gearbox, you could look at the nameplate because you need to see what the mounting position is. SEW uses six key mounting positions. It's M1 through M6. Okay. They're kind of like imagine the face of a die. You've got one through six, so each face would represent a mounting position. 
And so you could say, take this and it was mounted for M1. And uh, you look up the oil volume and then you say, if I needed to mount it at M4, it's going to require more oil. So you look up that and then you say, well, I need to add this much of liters or whatever volume you're looking at into there. And then you have the right amount. Gotcha. And I'm assuming that either SCW tells them the oil type or how do they know the oil type? Great question. The oil type is actually used uh, and identified on the nameplates. So you can see that on the bottom of the nameplate, what the oil type is. And then again, in our operating manual, it shows you the compatibility chart. So you know, hey, it doesn't have to be this brand, but it needs to be this viscosity or it needs to be synthetic or gear motor, uh, regular mineral oil. Gotcha. So we are trying to give them as much information as possible about the lubrication on the nameplate with each individual unit. Yes, that's right. That's fantastic news. Is there anything else you really want to talk about with these mounting positions or is that about it for this uh, this topic with gearboxes? Yeah, you know, um, I just think that the the important thing to remember is, is if you feel uncertain about something, then call SCW support or your local sales representative because there are a couple of situations you could run into where it's not just changing the oil. It's changing some components on the inside, uh, but for uh, general uh, gearbox oil changes, you can actually see the instructions in the operating manual. They they point at step one through whatever in order to do it properly. So if you feel comfortable changing the oil, change it. And if you don't, then contact our uh, sales and service team and they'll be able to walk you through the process. Well, that sounds straightforward to me and I appreciate your time today and I look forward to having you back. Thanks a lot, Cully. Awesome.